Winter, why must you be so cold? It's actually not that cold inside. I'm having one of those days where it's not really cold. Like it's eight degrees out Celsius, which is objectively not cold. It's like 22 inside, but for some reason I'm like freezing. Tis the old age, my body's cooling down. There are some people talking in front of my window. You cannot hear them because it's like muffled, but I can hear them and it's very distracting because it's like Just go away. Hello, my name is Miro and welcome to the channel where we talk about Hoyas and where people talk in front of my window. Seriously, go away. Today I wanted to talk about something that I do believe will be of interest to a lot of people and I am no expert in this area, but not just because I don't have taste or whatever, it's because I choose not to really care. We will talk about is ways to make your Hoyas look nicer. I, I do care to some extent, but I also have like three grow tents and you know, not, not the prettiest things in the world. So I kind of wanted to talk with you about it and I think, you know, we can share some ideas. I can I can tell you what I think will make us look nicer. Some of these things are based on my own experience and some of these things are just, you know, me having the eyes and, you know, recognizing that something does indeed look Nice. Now, as you know, I grow most of my Hoyas in my Mars Hydro grow tents under my Mars Hydro grow lights, and I do get very good results. So I don't really care so much about my Hoya display most of the time. I don't really even see it. However, I do recognize that this is not the case for most of you, or for at least many of you. I do think, though, there is a time when we kind of just give up on how it all looks aesthetically and we just want to get as many Hoyas as possible. And you know, grow tents are a great space for that. You don't have to care so much about the aesthetics since you are already having this in your room. However, it is nice to sometimes think, consider these things and some of these tips that I will share with you today also will help you keep your Hoyas organized, if that makes sense. And by that I mean we will just see how to tame those Hoyas because we know they can become pretty wild with their growth habit. So some of these tips will also address that, which again also will help if you are someone like me, if you have plants in the grow tents or if you have plants in the grow cabinets, I think you will find some of these tips very useful. But also if you don't have any of these two, if you just grow Hoyas in your room, there will be also tips for you that will make them look very nice. So one of the first things that I genuinely think makes Hoyas look nicer is trellising. Now, you know I'm not a great fan of trellising. I have had my issues, but you know, there is a way in which you can make them look very nice on the trellis. And I'm not just talking about Hoyas with big leaves that naturally kind of we think of putting on the trellis. I'm just here talking about even when it comes to hanging Hoyas. Hanging Hoyas, first of all, they look beautiful hanging and I love to have hanging Hoyas. But if you don't have the space where to hang them, trellising them is a great option and it, it really is a unique look, especially with small lead Hoyas. I have seen Lacunosas, Kanyakumarianas on a trellis and they look really, really good. I have seen Hoya Hirschkeliana. I think Adam Nondude has Hoya Hirschkeliana on a trellis, the variegated one. And I cannot really decide, is it better to have it on a trellis or not? Because I think both look very nice. So if you don't have a ton of space to hang Hoyas, but for whatever reason you have space to kind of keep them on a trellis, whether it be on the shelves or, you know, just on a, some sort of a surface, or maybe you don't want to drill holes into your ceilings or walls to hang the plants, you can just put them on a trellis. And that kind of really helps sort all of those wild vines out. Also, sometimes with hanging Hoyas, you will get unevenness, which is not a big issue, really, aesthetically. I think it looks, I think generally, plants that look asymmetrical can be very interesting. So the same thing with this, you know, it can look very interesting when you have something that's a bit uneven and hanging. But if you're not a fan of the look, which I can completely understand, you can just trellis that Hoya. And you can do this on a hanger, uh, so you can trellis the Hoya on a hanger, use the just the hanging parts or the whatever holds the pot up. You can use that for trellising or you can just take them from the hanging pot and then put on a trellis. Now, since we are on the topic of trellises, different trellises 
can really make a huge, huge difference. I cannot stress this enough. First of all, if you're gonna go with the tower trellises, I really do recommend you to go with a wider tower trellis. I have tried with narrow ones. I don't really know why I thought I would, I think why the reason why I did it is I thought I would save more material that way, which is true. You will be able to make more trellises, but now it's not so useful because it's just sometimes very difficult to make them confined to the to the smaller trellis to the narrower trellis so if you make your own trellises make sure that they are wide enough i generally now what i do is i try to make them almost as wide as the pot sometimes a bit smaller but typically as wide as the pot and i find that that width works really well it just makes it that much easier to trellis your hoya so they can go on the tower trellises but not all look good on tower trellises i have found by trial and error mostly error a lot of error that there are some that just for whatever reason they, they don't look nice on the tower trellis and i think mostly it's because they have very stiff lines so they don't look that good it is my opinion that actually a lot of them do look better on something that's like a 2d trellis but i can tell you from my own experience Hoya Jennifer, for example, she ain't gonna look good on a tower trellis. I have never managed. I've tried several times and it just does not look good. So I put it on a ladder kind of a thing and she looks so much better. It's just much easier to kind of make it go on that than on a round on a, or a cylindrical tower trellis. Same goes for Hoya Imperialis. All of the Hoyas that have kind of stiff vines, they really are a challenge for me to kind of make them go around a tower trellis. So this is kind of something that you will have to try and see. I think maybe you can try to make a tower trellis but have a backup of just like uh, some sort of a ladder or whatever 2D trellis you decide for. And, you know, when you start, you kind of see if you like it on a tower or if you don't, you can just go for the, you know, two dimensional trellis. Again, I think I really prefer the two dimensional ones. Just so, so, so much easier. And I used to think the tower trellises take up less space. Not really sure if that's true. This is something that will not matter for some Hoyas, but for some, it will really make a big difference. I was really kind of wanting to get rid of Hoya Jennifer. And as soon as I put it on that ladder, I really liked it. Also my Hoya Densifolia, she was a hanging plant, which was a bad, bad, bad choice. And as soon as I put her on a hoop, much better it improved the look of the plant so much and it actually bloomed and it looked very cute and i wanted to get rid of the entire plant i didn't even care i was like gone out of the window no one cares so what you actually may find to be true is that when you put your hoya on a different type of trellis you may fall in love with it again and i'm just saying try the hoops first maybe another thing with the trellises you can get more unique looking trellises i have seen people on facebook on instagram make them into several different shapes and they don't really care what the shape of the trellis is again i think if you're making something that is more unique try to go for something that is again kind of two-dimensional so Maybe it's like some sort of a swirly shape. Maybe I have seen people really like to do hearts. Not a big fan of the hearts. I think Adam has a very interesting trellis that kind of goes like this uh, for his Hoya Elliptica. And if you manage to get your Hoya to kind of take on the shape of the trellis, you can get something that is very sculptural. I think this is easier to achieve with smaller leaved Hoyas. So if you get a Hoya with big leaves and you try to kind of make her follow that unique trellis you're going to be able to do it it's not that but you're not going to be able to see the shape of the trellis so if you're really looking for something sculptural something interesting again not a big fan of something being too sculptural but i i can see it being interesting to some people and some of them do look nice i have to say i would pick a trellis like that for smaller leaved Hoyas. Also, another benefit is trellises are maybe not always the prettiest looking. So if you get something that is more sculptural, you will have something that looks nice from the get go. So if you start with a Hoya that is maybe on the small side and you put a big hoop or if you put a tower trellis, 
you're gonna have something that kind of doesn't look pleasing to the eye for you know quite some time but if you choose a trellis that has you know more pizzazz which is not not a word that i have ever used in my life so i don't even know why i'm using it now but if you choose something like that then you have something nice from the beginning of course i encourage you to try to make these trellises yourself or to maybe repurpose something that maybe you already have that you think would look very nice as a kind of a sculptural trellis because i know that you know getting all of these things can become pretty expensive especially with large collections but i think this can really be something that can you know elevate the look of your hoya another tip that will make your hoya look nicer is to kind of just chop it and propagate it to make a bushier pot sometimes they will do this themselves they will start out to become bushier and you don't have to do much i find that lacunosas are very good at this croniana lacunosa whatever some types of valiniana or affinity valiniana they are also good at this but not all of them some of them will just want to make a long long vine and they will not be really good at branching out if you have something like that i would chop that into several pieces depending what you want to achieve root that again and put it in the pot some of them can also just get very unruly i have hoya pandurata that does not look amazing it's just like all over the place if you have a hoya that looks kind of all over the place and you don't like the shape of it trim it and make a bushier pot now again this can be useful if you want to have like a very nice hanging plant you can kind of go around the pot and you get more vines hanging it's not always necessary to chop them there are other ways around this one of the ways for me is you can just take the vine and pin it down so kind of lift it and pin it down on top of the pot if you have space in the pot for that then the rest of the vine will root and then it will start to naturally kind of branch out from that or you know if you are wanting to grow hoyas not like hanging hoyas but maybe you want hoya on a trellis I find it also nice, for example, if you're working with hoops, to put two cuttings, you know, at the end of the hoop and they kind of meet on the top and then, you know, it's, it's just a faster way to get a nicer looking Hoya. I don't do this all the time. I sometimes will do it, sometimes not. It will really depend what type of mood I'm in because usually I get my hoya as a single node cuttings and I just, you know, there's nothing that you can do about that. Also what you can do if you have hoyas again that are hanging and they have very long vines and you know, the plant is out of balance, you can just cut that and you can gift it to your friend. You can propagate it as I already said, or sometimes what you can do, and this is something that I learned from, you know, being on Facebook groups and I saw Christina Carlson talk about this, what you can do is take that vine if it's long enough and kind of make it go up and then you can make it go kind of around the pot and i have done that uh, for several of my hanging hoyas and it's actually very nice and then you know you kind of start to lose the pot so it kind of looks like it's not even in a pot it looks like just a ball of something green that is hanging and i think that's a very nice look so i just really encourage you if you have vines that bother you just cut them a lot of people in the past were against cutting hoyas it seems to me i think now we are more relaxed when it comes to that which i think is great nice improvement it's not going to affect blooming that much and i think generally it makes them healthier they start to push out new growth and you know they become even more vigorous oftentimes actually they will become more vigorous after cutting them Maybe be careful if you don't want them to become too vigorous. Something very interesting that I have seen when it comes to trellising Hoyas is a combination of trailing and trellising. And I have seen this several times. And I do have to say, I think this kind of looks interesting. This will require some maintenance. That part that is kind of trailing over the edge of the pot, it can become too, too big. And you know, then that's an issue or maybe it doesn't necessarily have to be an issue, but I think it's just kind of interesting to see Hoya that is trellis and a hoop. And then some of the vines are kind of going over the edge of the pot. I like when, you know, the edge of the pot is kind of covered with vines. Also, if you want to make your Hoya look nicer, I find that the choice of the pot can play a big role in this. Now, this will depend, of course, on what is the size of your collection, because I will admit this is something that is very inconvenient for me. For me, the most convenient thing is to have the same pots, self-watering pots, because that is the most consistent because I have a large Hoya collection. Now, if you have like, you know, 50 Hoyas, which I think is manageable, or maybe even 100, 
you can choose some unique pots, some unique cover pots for them. And I think that also is very nice in the space. I would honestly like to be able to do that. But again, it would not make sense in my grow tents. I just want to have all the same pot in my grow tent. I think if you can get unique cover pots for your Hoyas, I think that is something that can really make them stand out and look nicer. But again, I un completely understand pots are expensive and this is a very expensive hobby. Like I do not even want to put on paper how much money I spent on pots, cover pots, potting mixes, fertile, well, not so much in fertilizer, but it gets expensive. Another thing that you can do is get a unique hanging pot. I have seen several that I really liked and I think this is very, again, suitable if you don't have a very large collection. There are pots, hanging pots, that actually do combine something that to me looks like a hoop trellis. I would definitely use it like a hoop trellis. So it could be a very nice look to have something going around that hanger and then have some of the Hoya just hanging from the pot. I think these are more and more popular. Some of them look like just a giant hoop or a ring and then the pot is in the middle. And I think that can also look very cool. Again, it depends what your style is. Personally, for me, I don't think I would like all of them. I think there are a couple of them that I would appreciate and I think they would look nice. But again, because I have so many Hoyas and so many of them are hanging, it's not the cheapest solution. But if you have a small collection, then it's completely fine. A very good way to display your Hoyas is putting them on a Hoya wall. I made a video about how to make a Hoya wall, and this can be applicable to grow tents, to actual walls, or to the cabinets, to the back of your cabinets. And this is just a very, very nice way to display your Hoyas. I think it can make the cabinets more interesting because really, what are you gonna do with the back of the cabinet? It's like glass against, you know, some sort of a wall, right? So you're gonna look at the wall through the glass? No. What you're gonna do is you're probably going to put some pegboards in there and then put some plants because that was going to look nice. Unless, of course, you have plants big enough that create kind of the back drop. But also, just like in the grow tents, it can make them look nicer when you have something on the wall of the grow tents. Many people have asked me what I have used in my grow tents. I have used rabbit fence, the same type of a thing that I used to make my Hoya trellises. I just made sure to cut it to the size of the tent. I zip tied that to my tent and that is it. Very simple. If you are into plants, I think living walls are just something special that, again, kind of can elevate the, the space for you personally, maybe not for other people. I think some people, when they come and see that I have these square walls, they're like, ooh, it's uh, too much. It's a bit too much. What I find also really helps when you want to make your Hoya look nicer is try to use less clips. I have used a lot of clips and a lot of these Velcro tapes in the past, and sometimes it's necessary to do that in the beginning, but I find that over time I can actually remove some of the clips and some of the Velcro and the Hoya kind of stays in the shape on the trellis. Not all of them, but I just found that in the beginning when I was trying to trellis the Hoyas, I would just use way, way, way too many hair clips and way too many pieces of Velcro. And then it just looks ugly. Like when you look at it, it, it no matter, you know, even the green Velcro, like on this one, really stands out. You can see like three. There is just no way that, no one, no one is looking at this and not seeing the Velcro. And sometimes again, you can remove them, not always. They're not all significant pieces. Like for example, I think I can remove this one and see. In the past I wasn't because for whatever reason this Hoya didn't want to behave, but now I can just remove it and now we're down to two. Aside from making like a green wall, what you can do is put wall shelves and you can get very unique wall shelves. Again, I have seen some very interesting looking shelves, wall shelves through the power of the eyes and the Instagram. And some of them, uh, because of the shape, they can be kind of used like a trellis, which is not always the most practical solution because then you cannot really move your plant. It becomes just very difficult, but it does look nice in the space. 
So I think just wall shelves really are very nice. I used to have a wall shelf before I had the green wall. I think maybe if I chose different Hoyas, it would look nicer. I remember having a wall shelf just behind you here, and that one looked very, very nice. But hanging Hoyas and trailing Hoyas can look really, really nice on the wall shelf. And it's kind of almost like a green wall. And it, again, gives you extra space. I generally find easier to keep my collection organized when I have Hoyas on shelves and i used to have these ikea omer shelves now they are absolutely not aesthetical at all they are a kitchen shelf and even the green one it doesn't look the best no way around it however what you can do is you can get again a shelf that has that is either a wooden shelf which i used to have i had the ivar shelf and i wanted to turn them into the cabinet so that's why we don't see them anymore and i never did that that was a failed diy forget about it. I think it's very nice the contrast between the wood and like the green foliage of the plant. Glass shelves, uh, I typically would avoid glass with metal. Again, Ikea has had this shelf that is black with glass and I, because of my cabinets, I wanted to actually get that shelf, but I don't think they make it anymore. So that can be a nice option because again, it will fit with the aesthetic of your home but also getting some shelves that have like different levels that can also be very dynamical in your space and it can look very interesting and very nice. So that's another way to kind of display your plants and you know, it doesn't have to be on these racks, even though let's admit it, the racks are the easiest. It's, you can just zip tie the lights, not an issue. So sometimes I guess you just have to decide, are you gonna go for the aesthetics or for functionality? And I am always, about the functionality first just so it's easier to keep on the top of the collection and i find these wire racks to be the easiest putting hoyas in the cabinets can be also a very nice to display them i don't find the cabinets super useful i have said it before i kind of was at one point finding them a bit more useful but then i again changed my mind something that happens a lot with me and i think the biggest challenge for me is getting the most adequate light the actual grow light. I have managed to fit a TS-1000 in my Millsville cabinet, but I did have to do some modification to the light. If you dedicate enough time, you can really turn a cabinet into something that looks very beautiful. You can use the pegboards to make a beautiful display. You can even cover the entire back glass of the cabinet with some foam and kind of make a like actual living wall. There are tutorials on YouTube how to do that. And I think that can look very nice and it can be something that they will really enjoy. But I am kind of steering away from anything that is a permanent setup just because I know what a pain in the everything it is when you get pests. And then, you know, I it's so much easier when your plants are not in a permanent setup where you can just take them out, spray them, treat them, shower them, whatnot. So, you know, just think about that if you want to do something that's like a permanent setup. Think what will happen when you see a mealy bug on one Hoya. And kind of my last tip for you is shower them plants. They will look much better when you properly clean them. You also have that benefit that it will probably get rid of some mites, which is a big issue with Hoyas. Not like Calatheus, but pretty, pretty annoying. So shower them Hoyas and they will also look much nicer. There is something about a freshly showered Hoya that pleases me. That is all for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it useful if you really wanted to elevate the look of the Hoyas. I do follow myself a lot of these tips to kind of attempt to make my Hoyas look nicer, but some of them grow so fast it's really hard to stay on top of, of everyone, especially with a large collection. Let me know down in the comments below if you have your own tips that you know, can help people improve the way that their Hoyas look or just improve displaying their Hoyas, make them more interesting, more unique. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, now is the perfect time. A more perfect time was at the beginning of the video, but Miro forgot to mention that, but you can do it now and no hard feelings. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. I hope that you enjoy your holidays. I think i'm not really sure when this video let me just check my schedule because i'm recording this video ahead this video will come out two days before my plane for leal leaves
So in two days I will be on a plane to France to meet Betsy for the first time and to pick up the new computer that you all so generously donated for. I'm recording this, um, what's the date? On the 6th of December, so quite ahead. And I am sure that by the time I actually edit and post this video, there will be just a lot of anxiety because I am blessed and anxious by nature, hello. And I have not been on a plane, I'm not afraid of flying, but I have not been on a plane for like 12 years. It's a lot of time, I wonder if they changed flying. Well, I can say that for many things though. Sorry, this is a complete tangent and I promise it's the last one. I was just telling Betsy, because I'm, I mean, obviously I know English, so I can, you know, get around the airport because I will be flying from Serbia to Switzerland and from Switzerland to France. And I was just like, you know, I just hope I don't get, enter the wrong plane, which is impossible. It's impossible, I know that, but anxiety. Anyways, the point of this story is I, you know, I told Betsy, I just wish there was a simulation for every airport. You can just, you know, go through the simulation and know what to expect, which really is like the best way to, to know if someone is anxious or not. If, if, if you want something like that, congratulations, you have anxiety. Anyways, I think you can expect to see some videos perhaps after I come back with both me and Betsy in them. I mean, I'm kind of spoiling the surprise here, but I think everyone is expecting that. But you don't know what to expect because we don't even know what we are going to record. There are a lot of ideas being thrown around, but I think, you know, if you want to see that, subscribe to both of our channels because I can, I do not know who's posting or editing this. And again, I have no idea what the videos will actually be, but I'm pretty sure they will be fun. Anyways, just, I wanted to say, enjoy this time, right? This kind of a downtime. I don't, I don't necessarily also like celebrate the holidays, but it's kind of like, you know, it, it's nice because there is Harry Potter on TV and, you know, I don't know. There is like a certain lull to winter that I enjoy. I guess we are going on until my battery stops, which is now, oh my goodness. Okay, battery is empty. I will see you soon. I have talked for way too much. Bye. I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Ashley Hoyas, Beth Gibson, Betsy Begonia, Carrie, Cynthia Taylor, Danube Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Deanne Sikorsky, Korski, Farah, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Houseplant Heather, Hoya Heather, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chio, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Koo, Kelso, Kristen Sherwood, Leplante Steph, Mandy Milliken, Mars B, Martina Alif Perday, Marty Miller, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Naily Yang, Nicole Moreau, Nicole and Caleb of Schleif Tropical, Sunita Macy, PJ, Rachel Colette Conroy, Robin L. Jennings, Stephanie H2O, Stephanie Zeely May, Sybil Williams, Tanya, Tessa Martins, the Swedish Hoya Noob, TJWO, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, and Zlokovny Pony. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Anne Margaret, Anna Kay, Bryna Phillips, Kilone, Claudia L, Fluffy Blue Sheep, Jerry's Garden, Lisa Helling, Liz Martinez, Morgan Kennedy, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Plan Dread, Plantelania, Ringlov, and Tang Watana Cool. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, Brandon Pacheco, Kerry, Constance Jacinta, Jolie Sullivan, Lauren M, Lori N. Subramanian, Luzmin Fernandez, Neely Spicer, Olivia Chin Mueller, and Paula Plants. Thank you all so much for incredible support. I hope that you are enjoying your holidays. I will see you in what I hope to be a very fun video for you to watch. Stay safe and I will see you soon.